Let's close out the trifecta of Cam Rui mini PCs. These are all kind of the lower power mini PCs. I have two videos already, uh, E2 and E1. They're meant to be you know, not super, super high power, super, super expensive. They're not meant for that type of situation. They're meant for people who need something like a media server. They're meant for people who need something like a little basic computer for day-to-day -day tasks. So let's look at this one here. This one is a slightly different model. It's the Cram Rui GK3 Plus. Oh, it says right there, GK3 Plus. Uh, silver, 16 gigabytes RAM, 512 gigabytes ROM, AKA storage. So it's a little bit different, like I said, than some of the other mini PCs that people are buying these days going for, you know, max power, super, super high performance mini PCs. But I mean, yeah, that's great. I do that too. I even have one. Uh, but sometimes you just want something that's a basic little box, either for, you know, basic computing, you know, get it for yourself, get it for your family members, whatever. Or it might be something that you're going to set up as like a little uh, Plex server, a little media server, or plop it under your TV, you know, that kind of thing. Back, we get a VGA, which is cool. Hook it up to a VGA monitor. That's not common. Kensington lock slot, so nobody walks off with it. Microphone. Uh, Ethernet under here, two HDMI, so you can do two displays. Very good. USB 4. <laughs> it's not actually USB 4. It's USB number 4. Uh, fan on the bottom there, pulling up there. This is not a high wattage system. It's an N95. Uh, so it's not going to run super hot or anything like that. It doesn't need a lot of cooling. So I expect that, you know, that very basic fan there is going to uh, keep it nice and cool. Uh, they're pretty easy to get into, which is nice. These here, you don't have to disassemble 50 different screws to get in and just, you know, upgrade some basic stuff. So I guess that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. That's cool. Just a single screw. You can get inside. And oh, wow, it's got a SATA. Oh, wow, that's cool. We have an empty spot. You can see there's no spot there for a second NVMe because there's SATA. So you get one NVMe for this NetHack, which is actually like, I wouldn't call it an off-brand. It's not. It's like a secondary brand. Uh, I see those all the time on uh, Amazon and people buy them say so they're good. And then you get this race on, which is also weirdly popular these days. I see this kind of stuff all the time these days. Uh, DDR4. 200 megahertz uh or mega transfers it's gonna be fine again this is not a performant gaming pc so it's gonna be fine uh dual channel will be quicker for heavy compute but that's really not the purpose of this machine at all like really really at all so that's fine so uh easy to upgrade the nvme if you want more ram i don't know why you would for the purpose of this machine but you certainly could if it's even just like i guess a number crunching machine you really could actually you know take it up to 32 gigabytes and the uh, ssd uh processor in here is going to be fast enough to do I mean, any type of basic task with ease, not just like it'll work, it'll be fast. Uh, a little SATA drive here, a little one terabyte, pop that in there. We're gonna have to test it, right? Make sure it works. Cute. Cute. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, I probably shouldn't have unscrewed that. That was dumb. Um, so you're basically gonna screw it in there. I might just put it in for the sake of being lazy, but normally you would actually screw this in here. So, uh, you know, there's screws there uh but i'm not gonna do that right now because it's just a test that's my ssd i can use it for something else actually um yeah, that's good i like that i like that package and i like that little ssd thing set up that's clean there's a little red light blue light okay so let's come in here just did some updates cpu an n95 now an n95 is not some you know, massively powerful CPU. It's not meant to be. It's meant to be just an efficient kind of low wattage CPU, more than enough for basic stuff because it is a true quad core. I mean, chips have come a long way where, you know, a low power intro level quad core is nowadays much more powerful than chips from a few years ago, honestly. So yeah, you get really good performance out of those there. Again, not really meant for, you know, heavy code compile, serious 4k video editing you could it's not meant for that uh ram here 16 gigabytes not going to be super fast not going to run a dual channel so it's not gonna be the fastest performer but again for a media box or plexer it's fine uh id sonics is my ssd you can see it reads it just fine my little uh sata that i put in there um we'll check that out in a moment see how fast it is uh intel uh graphics there very good uh, it's weird that it doesn't say the wi-fi that's weird <laughs> it has wi-fi it's weird that it doesn't say it in there, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's good. Uh, let's come in and we'll actually test some stuff. We'll test some ports. We'll test the uh, performance of the SSD in that. We'll test the noise and the thermals as well. And that's probably enough. I mean, honestly, for what it is. So let's get some stuff installed and get some benchmarks. Okay, let's just do some file installs. 
just basically for noise to see if it's a noisy machine. Is the fan even going? It's not even spinning. I guess it'll spin when it needs to. It's not spinning yet. Uh, okay, so anyways, that didn't cause any noise at all. So, I'll come in here. So this is a very, very low wattage CPU, which is what it's supposed to be. You can see, you know, it was idling down at like four, three to four watts. Peak here. There it goes. Now it cooked up a little bit there. 12 watts, almost 13. Peaked at 13.5. We'll see how long it can go. Again, this is not going to be some powerhouse. We're going to be looking at a score of, you know, down around an 11th gen laptop, somewhere around there, which, I mean, it's fine. Honestly, people still buy 11th gen laptops. Is the fan even going? Yeah, spinning now. It is spinning, it's just completely silent. It's not gonna be some powerhouse, but what I'm gonna do here is, this is gonna keep running, so we're gonna have that up here, and we're just gonna start moving around, you know, coming in here, seeing if it's still snappy, right? And we're running a Cinebench run, and we're still able, this is still snappy, right? So this is the point I wanna make here. This is not some, you know, synthetic benchmark monster, right? Like, you're not gonna get 15,000 here, and you know, if you're doing heavy code compile, it's not the chip for that. But for daily use, if you're just a person who's looking for a computer that can get everything done, has is fully modern as well. You know, doesn't have the weird quirks of you know some eighth year old machine. Uh, but you can see here, I mean, it's quick, right? Like we're even while we're running Cinebench, we have YouTube doing apparently advertisement. Get out of here! It's got a Zenit Avenue. Even while we're doing YouTubey stuff, right? Like it's it's quick. We'll come in here. I don't know. We'll go 1440p, right? Scrubbing through. I guess I, even, yeah, I didn't even stop this. This is still running, right? So for a daily driver type PC to just do generic tasks, it's not going to be slow by any means. It's certainly not going to be slow by any means there. SATA SSD speeds inside there. You know, it's going to sound a hard drive. It's going to be nice and quick. I do all my game testing, all of it, on a SATA SSD, 5, 000, 500 megabytes a second. It's quick, right? It's SATA. Again, another thing where people often go too far. They're like, oh, I need an upper Gen 4 drive or even a Gen 5. And it's like, but you don't actually. It doesn't make any difference. Um, transferring files would be a little bit slower, obviously. But again, this is not a the type of machine where you're moving 100 terabytes of, 100 gigabytes of uh, video editing files. Like you're not doing that on this machine. Uh, I did a couple runs there. It's fine. Uh, it's not the fastest Wi-Fi. So it's not super fast, but it's fine overall. And we'll just run a speed test in here. It doesn't really matter. You should get about gigabit, I'm assuming. Yeah, gigabit Ethernet. So, you know, if you're doing this as a server type thing, media server, I mean, you can go with the Ethernet. It's uh, You can go with the Wi-Fi. It's totally fine. 250 megabytes a second is fast. You're not getting that from any online, like YouTube is not feeding you 250 megabytes a second of actual data, right? And that, But the other option is you can just use Ethernet wired up if you need. If you need to, you know, you need to have that type of speed, you just come in here and you're going to be totally fine. Okay, so 1,000 megabytes a second. Uh, that's as fast as a SATA SSD can go anyways, so I'm quick. And why is that relevant? I mean, it's a mini PC, you don't get a ton of storage inside. Actually, you do get SATA, which is really nice actually, but I think one of the uses for this would be to house your media. So, you know, you get this here, then you hook it up to, oh, it's kind of off camera, but it's really hard to see, something like this here. This is a five bay hard drive type thing, and you plug it in there, and having good speed is important because you're gonna be moving video files around and that. So, I mean, that's overkill, if anything, but that's good. You're going to be getting nice, good speeds out of the front. Okay, so let's bring it in. I don't, this is not a complicated video by any means. Um, you know, it's a mini PC. It serves exactly the purpose that it's supposed to. It's very quiet and very efficient, and it's going to have enough chops behind it with that N95 to get the job done for a generic desktop type, you know, productivity type machine. It's going to be fantastic. That's going to be one major use of this. I think the other major use of this is going to be a media PC, whether it's hooked up to external storage and it's like a Plex type device. It's going to be nice and fast, especially with those extra fast ports and the Ethernet there. Uh, the other option is, you know, just having it as like a local media box, sticking it underneath your TV, Netflix, YouTube, that kind of stuff. It's going to be nice and quick and it's quiet. Nobody wants to have a PC under their TV going while they're trying to watch a TV show, right? Just super annoying. So that's good. Everything works well. I mean, you get good expandability in it. It's more than enough for what you need it to be. Yeah, they could make it faster, right? They could add a brand new, more powerful CPU. They could add a dual RAM and all that kind of stuff, but it is irrelevant. 
It doesn't serve the purpose of this machine at all. It does, just makes it more expensive. It's gonna do the same thing. So that's the device there. Just another Camry machine that does exactly what it's supposed to do, keeps the cost low, but the value very high.